Welcome, everybody. My name is Tom Pullen. Thank you for joining today. It's always good to be found in the Word of God. This is the book of John, part two. We want to continue our study in John. Today we're reading from chapter 1, verse 6 up to 12. The Bible says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And we say, Amen. To the Word of God. So, in the last teaching from the book of John, we learned that Jesus is God. Now, as we continue, I want, to rem- I want you to remember that as we go through Scripture, we are searching for Christ. And there's something that I need you to understand before we get into this man has no place being exalted next to or close to Christ. When you think of Christ and then you think of yourself in comparison to Christ, I want you to think of the word unworthy, because without Christ, that is exactly what we are. We are unworthy. We are only worthy, saved, sanctified in Christ. Without Christ, we remain unworthy. You must always remember that Christ is everything, especially when it comes down to these spiritual things. There is no other way to the Father in heaven not your good works, not being well behaved, those things are only relevant in Christ. You can obey every single scripture in the Bible, but refuse to believe in Jesus Christ. You can say that that's the one thing that I will not do. I will do everything written in the Bible, but I will not believe in Jesus Christ. Everything you do will be irrelevant. You won't make heaven. You won't be acknowledged by the Father in heaven. You can be the kindest, the best person to ever walk on this planet. You can be Mother Teresa 10,000 times. It does not get you anywhere without Christ. Christ is everything. May your life ever be before Christ. May you ever seek Him with your heart. Think about Him all the time. Read His Word. Follow Him by reading His Word. Because as long as you walk with Christ, you are walking right. You know, when we read the Bible, sometimes we see these men who are considered great men in the Bible. And even for me, some of my favorite people in the Bible are Abraham, David, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter. But these are just men, and they are not Christ. They are not God in the flesh. They are men that chose to walk with and serve God. They don't come close to who Christ is or who Christ was as a man on this earth. And without him, they are irrelevant. Peter was just a fisherman, a rough, rugged, violent one. Abraham was just a humble, quiet man. David was a shepherd boy. Mere men, men like us. But Christ is God, was God in the flesh, and is God exalted today. You need to keep that in your heart because we've made Christ like us and he's not. Christ is everything. The verse we just read, let's talk about the first part of the verse. It says there was a man sent from God whose name was John and the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light so all men through him might believe. If we go back to John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. That's John chapter 1, verse 1. And in this verse that we read, there was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. Can you see the difference between John and Jesus? Christ is described as God. He is described as very God the fullness of who God is. He was in the beginning, creating all things, and John is described as a man sent from God. That's it. John is a man sent from God. 
So when they preach sermons to you, when they tell you, oh, John was a great man, oh, John was in camel skin, oh, John this and John that and John this, get up and walk out. Because John, the very existence of John was to be a witness for Jesus Christ, not for him to bring glory to his own name. John was just a man sent from God to bear witness of Christ, not to be the center of attention. When a messenger comes to you with the message, listen to the message that he's delivering. Don't focus on the messenger because it's the message that he's delivering that's important. If you focus on the messenger, you miss the whole point, you miss the whole message, and you're in trouble. So I don't think John himself would even accept you preaching about him. You've got to listen to the message that he brought and focus on that, not on the man. Yes, the Bible gives us a description of John, but it's not for us to make sermons about it. Why was John there? Why did he come? There's no point in me preaching a message saying, oh, the messenger that came today, he wore um, blue coveralls and he had yellow shoes and he had a yellow hat and he came riding on an 18-speed bicycle. All that is irrelevant. He was sent with a message and the message is what is important. And John here was sent to bear witness of Christ. And this is the most important thing that I want you to see from the description of John here. You see the duty of a minister, of a Christian minister. It is to bear witness of Christ. The first duty of a Christian minister is to bear witness of Christ. Christian ministers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are not kings. You hear things like, I'm called to to preach the gospel. I have the kingly anointing on me. You must do as I say. You must fall after me. No, you're not a king. You're not a priest. You're not agents of our souls. You are witnesses. Witnesses sent to bear testimony of Jesus Christ. The prophets in the Old Testament would bear witness to the word of God. They'd bear witness to God's truth. And now the prophets of the new age bear witness of God's truth, and God's great truth is Jesus Christ. That is what Christian ministers are supposed to do, bear witness of Christ. But sadly, we now have Christian ministers who talk about themselves. I'm anointed, I'm powerful, I'm the man of God, I'm, I'm the father, I'm the papa, I'm the, uh, the anointed one. And then they talk about everything else other than Christ. They talk about your money, your health, your car, your kids, your job, your prosperity, your travel destinations. They talk about everything, your smile, your happiness, live healthy, eat healthy, but they never talk about Christ. Yet the purpose of a Christian minister is to testify about Christ. Listen to Acts chapter 2 and verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. What did he do? He testified. Acts chapter 20 and verse 21, talking about Paul, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that they are testifying, so they are witnesses for Christ. That's what we are here for as Christian ministers, to witness and to testify about Christ, not to talk about the world, not to talk about ourselves, not to talk about angels, money, cars. We are witnesses for Christ. Everything else Christ will take care of. We're not here to motivate and bring down walls of Jericho and slay Goliaths. We are here to testify about Jesus Christ. Listen to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And then if you go to John chapter 15 and verse 26, Jesus said, 
But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So the power that we receive from the Holy Spirit is power to be witnesses for Christ. And then Christ tells us in John here, he says, he's going to testify about me. A lot of the times, in fact, all of the time we do not experience the power of the Holy Spirit is because we're not testifying about Christ. We are not witnesses of Christ. He says, after the Holy Spirit comes, you're going to have power to be witnesses. So if you want to see the power of the Holy Spirit, be a witness for Christ. Tell people Jesus died for you to save you from your sins. He died for you to deliver you, to transform you. And in in that, the first thing people will experience is conviction. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. When you are a witness for Christ under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and people hear and receive the word, they're convicted. That's power. The second thing they'll experience is transformation. That's the power of the Holy Spirit for somebody to go from sinner to saint. And if if you haven't realized it, it's impossible to change the heart and the mind of a man. But through the Holy Spirit, it is possible. And that's the power that works through us when we are witnesses for Christ. We have to be witnesses for Christ. That is what a Christian minister is for. So when you listen to a teaching, no matter how good the teaching is, if it's not witnessing for Christ, get up and leave because it's contaminating your soul. A lot of people out there love the world today because they went to church. That is a sad, sad statement. There are people who now say God does not exist. They say Christianity is about making money because they went to church. Imagine that. There are people that used to fear God when they did not know church. But one day they decided to go to church and they don't fear God anymore. And you know that I'm talking about the false church. You have to be careful. Unless a Christian minister bears the full testimony of Christ, he's been unfaithful to his calling. Don't listen. To what he has to say. Now, this is what you need to understand as well. It's the duty of a Christian minister to bear witness of Christ and to testify about Christ, but it's not his duty to convert souls. His job is to tell you about Christ. It is your responsibility, the receiver of the word, to believe. If you do not believe, it is your fault. If you reject the working of the Holy Spirit in your heart and your mind, it is your fault. It is not the responsibility of the Christian minister to convince you. That's very important. A lot of the times we want to hear a word and hear a word and hear a word and then say that nothing's changing in my life. I'm not convicted. I'm still sinning. I'm still tempted, I'm still failing to overcome sin because you did not believe. It's on you. There is power in the testimony of Jesus Christ. There is power enough for your salvation. He can heal your soul. There's power for him to transform your soul. There's power for you to be transformed into a child of God. But if you do not believe, it's on you. And you will not experience that power. I hope you heard. Let's move on. The Bible says that was the true light which lighteth every man and cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world did not know him. Listen, do you notice something here? From when we started reading John, one of the most common things Christ is called the light. He is the light. And not only that, it says here in John that he is the true light. So for the spirit world, Christ is the source of all light. Now, just humor me for a moment. Christ is like the sun that shines in the day. He's exactly like the sun. The sun lights up the whole world. Every plant you see out there, every human being living needs the sun. Without the sun, we'll be living in a cold dark world and we will all soon die. But it says that Christ is the light. 
And light is so important. When you think about sunlight, you realize how important light is. And just like the light that the sun gives, it's free for everyone. The sun does not restrict and saying, no, you guys are bad people. It's free for everyone who wants it. If the sun is shining wonderful and bright, and then I decide, no, I'm not going into the sun. I put on my blindfolds and then I go and live underground. It's my foolishness that's going to harm me because the sun is there and it's free for everyone. No restrictions, no conditions. The sun is like, guys, I'm shining for everyone. Plant your vegetables, plant your fruit trees. Come into the sun, get healthy, come and enjoy the sunlight. But we refuse and we say, no, I'm going to live underground. Just like the sun gives you light, Christ gives you light. And just the same, the consequences of rejecting the sun are the same when you reject Christ. It's not the sun's fault that you chose to reject it. It is your own foolishness. If you reject Christ, it's your own foolishness. Because Christ came to take away the sins of all the world. So when you find yourself in darkness, which leads you to the pits of hell, it's nobody's fault but yours, because the light was free. He came, he shined for free, to take your sins away. All you have to do is come to him, and believe in him, then follow him by obeying him, and you're walking in light, free from sin. He has taken your sins away. Act quickly. Jesus came as the light, and he shines his light, and all we have to do is just respond quickly by coming to him. And then we have to just make up and decide in our hearts that I want to obey him. I want to live for him. And then we begin to walk our journey. And everything in our life slowly begins to die. Everything that hinders us from walking with him, everything that t- has taken us away from God, it begins to die. Christ is the source of all things godly. He's the source of righteousness. He's the source of truth. He's the source of salvation. He's the source of healing. But you have to believe in him and you have to come to him. Listen to the book of John chapter 3 verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You see that men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Light has come. The sun is shining. And you say, close the curtains, block the light. We don't want light in the house because it's going to expose me. It's going to expose what I'm doing in the dark. You do not want to be exposed. You do not want to be seen. You do not want to be recognized. Romans 1.21 Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Listen to this. Jesus created the world. Everything was created by him, according to John. And then not only that, everything in the world is sustained by him. Imagine if Christ would take his name, his word, his spirit out of the world, the evil that will be left. Look at the people groups and the nations that reject Christ. Look at what they've become. The nations that say we don't want Jesus or we don't acknowledge him as God or they say, We don't want his Bibles in our schools. Look at what they've become. Christ holds everything together. He created everything and he holds everything together. But he was invisible. So people did not acknowledge him because he was invisible. But then the Bible says he came even to his own, but they rejected him because of evil we do and foolishness in our hearts. It is our own foolishness that turns us away from Christ. But I want to say to you, Christ is the light. Come to the light. Yes, you're a sinner. We all are. Yes, you have secret deeds. We all do. You have secret thoughts that are not right. That's fine. He doesn't say cleanse yourself. He says, come to me. I am the light. He will expose those things. He will wash them away from your life and he will set you free. And he says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. But because of our own wickedness. We refuse to know him. It's because of our own wickedness that we don't come to him. Come on now. Come to Christ. Let's move on. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. 
for you are the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. It says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When you have faith in Jesus, you become a child of God. You become a son of God. You become a child of God when you believe in Jesus. It is a privilege. There is no selection, segregation, or separation. It's a privilege given to all. If you believe in Jesus with your heart, if you believe in what he has done and the work he has done and who he is, that he is God, he'll give you power. Where does the power come from? The Holy Spirit. Romans 8.15, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's the power he will give you, the spirit of adoption into the kingdom of God, and you will become a child of God. What does it mean to be a child of the king? It means you're safe, you're protected. He provides for you, he watches over you, he keeps you, he shelters you, he guides you, disciplines you, leads you. You're not an orphan. Jesus said to the disciples, I will not leave you as orphans, abandoned and alone to fend for yourselves. I will send the Holy Spirit and he will comfort you. And yes, we may be few in number, those who are sons of God, despised by the world, persecuted, hated, ostracized because we are sons of God. But on the flip, because we are sons of God, we are kept under his shelter, hidden under the shadow of the Almighty as his children. I have a question for you today. Are you a son of God? And does it show in the way you live? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you hate sin? Do you hate the world? Do you hate the deeds of the flesh? Are you living in obedience to Christ? Are you reading his word to seek after him? Is Jesus the source of light for you? Are you children of God? If you're not, make that choice today. Come to the light. That's all he says. He says, come, believe and receive. He wants you to come. He wants you to say, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I want to stop sinning. I want to obey your word. I want to follow you. And he'll give you power to be the son of God when you believe. That's it. Believe in him. Receive his word. Receive his truth. And you have power to become a son of God. Listen to me. Act quickly. Amen. Thank you for joining today's teaching. God bless you. If you've made it this far and you've been blessed by the teaching, please subscribe to the channel. If you have not already, please hit the thumbs up button. Okay, below the video, you'll see there's a subscribe button. There's a thumbs up button. Just give us that like. There's a share button there. For somebody you think who needs to hear this, please share. Share it with as many people as you can. Also, for some of you below, there's a join button. And if you'd like to become a channel member to support us, to help us spread the word and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, please click, click the join button and become a channel member at whatever level you choose. If you wouldn't like to join and give, a, you just want to give a one-time gift, um, there's a thanks button there. You can click on that and there's a slider and you can choose at what level you would like to give. Please consider doing this prayerfully. In the description below, there's a link to our Patreon page. If you'd like to support us over there on Patreon, please click on that link, go over there and choose at what tier you'd like to support us. God bless you. Thank you for doing that. And to everyone that prays for us, to everyone that encourages us and supports us, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you very much. It's because of you that we are able to continue to do what we do. God bless you and thank you. And finally, remember, as true disciples of Christ, we learn, we practice, and we teach because that's the only way to do it. Amen. I'll see you in the next one.